Glamma D here and I'm here today uh, making my second video in my Betty Crocker picture cookbook series uh, and today I'm going to make my first recipe in the book and I'm going to give you some tips which I'm going to do first and today it is how to measure to be sure of results. So it says Cooking success is up to you. If you'll take pains to measure true, use standard cups and spoons all the way and level off, it'll always pay. So first it goes through the different uh, kinds of measuring utensils. And we have your standard measuring cup. This is one cup. This is probably vintage. <laughs> I think it was my mom's 1970s Tupperware. Still works great. Measures one cup of whatever I want one cup of. Uh, so this is a standard one cup measuring cup. A dry measuring cup. This is a liquid measuring cup with, uh, it has the marks on it for each cup. So you use this to measure liquids. And then they specify the graduated measuring cups, which are also dry measuring cups, just of different sizes. So this is a quarter cup, this is a third cup, etc. Those are your graduated measuring cups, also used for dry ingredients. And these are your measuring spoons. Tablespoon, half a tablespoon, teaspoon, half a teaspoon. So these are your measuring spoons. So the directions for measuring flour are in this first row here. And first they say to sift it onto paper, which I've ever never actually done onto a piece of paper or parchment paper, but that's really smart. So you would sift it to aerate it a little and get it fluffy and then you would lightly scoop it into your measuring cup and then you use something with a straight edge and you level it off so that's how you would measure dry ingredients um, especially flour with the sifting um, for sugar you could either scoop just scoop it um, or spoon it in and then then again you would level it off so here's what they're giving the instructions for sugar and here is for powdered sugar what you do is you put it in a sieve like this and if you just pat 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 like that and it comes out and then uh, all the lumps will stay in here so that and you'll do that over paper also um, or bowl and then you won't have any lumps in your powdered sugar. And then again, you would gently spoon it in. And you wanna make sure it stays fluffy so you don't really wanna be tapping your measuring cup as you're spooning it in. You wanna keep it nice and light. And then again, you would level it off. And on the next page of measuring, they're talking about baking powder, soda, salt, cornstarch, cream of tartar, spices, etc. Which you use the same method. You fill or scoop the measuring spoon and then you level it off with a straight edge. I always usually use a table knife. I use a spatula, anything with um, a straight edge like that. Um, and then if you have shortening and you're putting it in a cup, you scoop, press it down, press it down, and usually then you will have to level that off um, as well. So that's how you would do shortening. And then butter. Butter is pretty easy if you use sticks of butter. So um, if you don't have sticks and it's soft, you can press it in like you would shortening and level it off. Um, 
but butter is usually marked by the tablespoons so you just go by that and uh, a standard cube of butter is a half a cup of butter so if it calls for a half a cup you just use a cube or a whole cup you'd use two cubes you know quarter cup half a cube so that's um, measuring butter now in a liquid measuring cup you would pour in your liquid and then you always want to hold it at eye level when you're measuring in your liquid measuring cup and there'll be a, a slight curve they call it the meniscus uh, the sides will be slightly higher than the center so that center point is what you want to go by not the um, not the highest point but the center of the the bottom of the curve And let's see, they give a chart for eggs, and usually eggs are measured um, by the egg, not usually by cups. But uh, two medium eggs is a third of a cup, two large eggs is a half a cup, three medium is a half a cup, and three large is two thirds of a cup. Uh, let's see. Oh, when you measure molasses or syrup or honey in your measuring cup, if you have used shortening or butter or something like that in your measuring cup, then when you pour it out, it'll just slide out and it won't stick to the sides. That's what they're saying here. Molasses or syrup. Fill up previously used for shortening. It rounds it up. So level it off and then scrape it out with a rubber spatula. Dried fruit. Pack raisins, dates, figs, etc. Lightly into a measuring cup. Press gently and level off the top. And then coconut. Pack coconut or nuts lightly into a measured cup measuring cup and level off. Soft breadcrumbs pack lightly into a measuring cup. Do not press down hard and level off. Shredded cheese or grated cheese pack lightly into a measuring cup and level off. Fine breadcrumbs spoon lightly into a measuring cup and level off. Do not shake the cup. So that's the directions on measuring. And I will be doing some measuring because I am going to make the first recipe. And the first page of the recipes are uh, confections. So I'll be making confections. It says easy confections for the children. So I'm going to make Elsie's nougat bars. So to make Elsie's nougat bars. The first thing you're supposed to do is over hot water melt butter and marshmallows. So that would be um, like in a double boiler, which I don't have. <laughs> but I do have two pans, so I'm going to make a little double boiler and I'm going to use these canning rings. And then I got some water in there. So the second pot um, won't be sitting directly on the burner. So I'm going to use this for my second pot and I'm just going to set that in there. Um, and then the recipe calls for marshmallows and three tablespoons of butter. And I'm supposed to melt those in that pan. And I'm just going to cut with a, with a knife right here. And I'm just going to have to uh, let that melt and cook. While it's doing that, um, after I get everything mixed up, 
I'm have to put it in a buttered pan. So I'm going to butter the pan really quick. Um, and to do that, I usually uh, put my hand in a baggie. <laughs> And I'll put a little butter on here. And then I will butter this pan. So this is going to be um, it's almost like a Rice crispy Treat kind of method where I'm going to be melting the marshmallows um, and butter. And then I'm going to be mixing it with the other ingredients and pressing it into this pan. The other ingredients are um, nuts, kicks, kicks, cereal, and coconut, and a little bit of salt. So we'll just wait for this to cook, melt down, and then I'll be back. We'll mix in the other ingredients. This is just starting to get a little melty. We'll keep melting it. And as it's doing that, I'll get these other ingredients ready that we're supposed to um, stir in. So it calls for some nuts. I have, uh, it just says nuts. I'm going to be using these chopped walnuts. And then it calls for calls for coconut. So this is one reason why I won't be telling you <laughs> my thing, won't be telling you how marvelous these are because I actually don't really like coconut. Well, I shouldn't say I don't really like. It. I don't like it at all. So um, I'm sure my kids will love these, and I will let them say how uh, delicious it is. pretty hard there in the bottom pot. So I'm gonna see how it's getting. Can you see? And then it calls for salt. A half a teaspoon of salt. much longer. Almost all melted. Okay, this looks pretty. 
pretty smooth and melted. So I'm gonna take it off the heat. And we'll mix this in. Try to do it gently and not crush uh, the kick cereal. I think I'm going to use this other scoop now to fold it in. Coated nice and evenly. The directions do say fold, which is um, sort of a turning over and cutting through. That looks pretty nice and well coated now. So I'm gonna put it in the pan. Okay, so I've got it all pressed in the pan. Uh, now the directions say to refrigerate it for 45 to 60 minutes before you cut it into bars. So I will put it in the fridge and then I'll cut them. We'll have the kids dry them out. So now it has been about an hour and they've it's gotten all hardened and cooled. So now I'm going to cut it into bars.
Okay, so there's my first recipe, Elsie's Nougat Bars. Thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe. I'm sure this is going to be fun. We'll find some new favorites, probably have some failures <laughs> along the way as we go through the Betty Crocker picture cookbook from 1950. So thanks for watching today. I'm going to make dinner and then I'm going to give my kids this treat. I'm sure they'll be delighted. Have a great day.